Assalamualaikum and hi class. Alright, today let's look the difference between uh, hold on, okay. My computer does not respond. Um, we will look the difference between uh, chemical industry and uh, food industry. Uh, I know that we are using the main text for chemical industry, eh? chemical engineering plant design. Uh, but basically, uh, you need to remember that uh, process and food uh, engineering is actually considered one of the sub uh, field under chemical engineering. Okay, I'm sorry for this. My my PowerPoint slide does not respond. Okay, taking that sometimes. All right. So, so this slide show to you uh, the different based on the leg legislations. Okay, so this is my main legislation. There are a lot of legislation involved when you build up a factory. So uh, other legislation that not been listed here, such as factories and machinery act. Alright and alright, but I will not uh, put it into detail on the legislation. I will only uh, touch uh, only these two legislation, which is occupational safety and health administration, and another one is on the food safety uh, under food act basically. Alright, so this is um this is cons this I just want to uh, show you this where because this is uh, among the major different uh, between uh, chemical industry and food industry so um, chemical industry for chemical industry in order for you to run the factory you need to as well to comply with occupational safety and health legislation and for uh, legislation for occupational safety and health while for food industry uh, you are not only born to 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 comply with occupational safety and health act but you also need to comply with food act all right because in chemical industry we need to also uh, in chemical industry we uh, we must make sure that uh, the the environment is safe to the human to the worker and then to the environment uh, to the the to the people surrounding that factory while for food industry we are not only uh, look at into the human uh, health spec the safety of human but we also look at on the aspect of the product the food product because uh, the food safety the safety of the food is very important because the food will going to be consumed by human so for let's say you preparing you preparing the food product which has been contaminated for let's say, let example uh, by E. coli so if let's say you produce it in bulk and then you supply the food products around uh, apa ni? Uh, all over the world so basically you can create a food poisoning and it can be an outbreak yeah? because it can affect a large numbers of people worldwide uh, for that is for example that's why we must control uh, the food safety and it cannot be compromised okay so it it will be controlled uh, uh, by you by the legislation uh, namely in Malaysia Food Act okay right so this is things that you need to know why they are different so when this uh, act there is imposed uh, food safety food act so it then other standard uh, uh, ni? Uh, other standard has been established to support the needs of the act all right and the need of the regulation okay because when people develop act the regulation will also be imposed <coughs> so now then <coughs> on the aspect of the design the principle of mechanical design and construction of food processing uh, equipment are basically similar to those of chemical or process industry. The principle you design heat essential for chemical industry is also being applied for food industry because the two unit operate the, the heat essential will be the same. Alright. Okay. Uh, 
this is among the basic design requirement eh? basic design requirement for food equipment is basically to contain to co to to con the complement of the materials that you process and then you will look at on the strengths of the component and then uh, the efficiency of the operation uh, the efficiency of the transfer of uh, energy during processing and then uh, the other aspect that we need to look at on the equipment is how 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 robust the equipment okay how reliable the equipment in terms of does it resistant to corrosion will it be cost effective and uh will the, op the, the operations of uh, the equipment uh, can cause any hazard to the uh, worker okay we are, okay this is among the uh, basic requirements and the, the criteria of the equipment that commonly been looked for chemical industry all right and this also been looked for food industry also okay when you will need to design equipment for food industry all right the things that uh not present uh in any chemical engineering textbook okay chemical engineering design textbook is this aspect food processing equipment where for food processing equipment we have another extra criteria okay we must comply with strict standards and regulation to secure quality and safety of the food product okay so the legislation is it's it would like a shield uh, to protect the to protect the food okay from hazards okay so the criteria of the uh, when you design an equipment will involve material of construction okay selection of materials of construction so, so you must show you sorry you must select the materials that will not uh, cause any hazard to the food product which in contact with the surface of the equipment ah. and then you must design or fabricate the equipment where will assist uh cleaning process will assist the maintenance process or, or it will not uh, accumulate or it will not trap any food residue because all the food residue will cause uh food has uh, another hazard which uh, biological hazard where microbe can grow okay uh, because the food residue uh, mainly a medium for microbe to grow okay and then the equipment uh, fabrication also must is uh, been designed uh, so that it can be easily cleaned and sanitized and then it should and then the operation also of the equipment should support the sanitary design of the equipment so that means the operation will not cause uh, other hazard as other food hazard or it will not cause other risk to the food safety okay all right then by having this criteria by considering this criteria when you design the equipment so then you can protect the product safety okay this is extra criteria criteria compared to the chemical uh, when you design an equipment for chemical industry okay so among the hazard that you need to know okay uh, typical uh, the main hazard in uh, for food sets, uh, for food product is biological hazard okay such as the pet food pathogen like e coli salmonella all right uh, then this is chemical hazards the chemical hazard can can uh, how to say uh, this chemical hazard can come from uh, your cleaning detergent okay the cleaning detergent that been used to clean the uh, processing line okay and it can also come from the grease uh, which have been used in the any uh, movement uh, mechanical part eh? all right and then it can also uh, contributed by physical hazard eh? physical hazard and eh? the the uh, physical hazard so this can happen from the uh, wear and tear of the equipment for example or uh, it can also cause from the other hazard uh, from the operator for example uh, apa ni? Uh, it could come from the uh, misconduct okay 
uh, during the processing or careless mistake for example by using staple eh uh, staple i don't know what to call it the staple cord the staple uh, what do you call this uh, the staple lid eh for example eh, the staple lids like this all right uh, where sometimes they use the staple lid for their uh, record keeping okay and then for somehow this being dropped into the processing line okay this also things that consider physical hazard the hair of the worker eh, the piece of hair of the worker is okay can also can cause hazard to the food all right now i would like to introduce to you the equipment classes okay uh you must know that there are two type of equipment the two type uh, two classes of equipment okay one is pri proprietary proprietary equipment and another one is non proprietary equipment so uh the difference between this yeah proprietary equipment been designed and sold as standard catalog item by specially manufacturer while for this non proprietary equipment normally is custom built i will show later on and then this is basically a special design okay this example so this is example of proprietary equipment such as pumps compressor dryer filters centrifuge all right so things that you need to take note that for process engineer it's not normally involved in the detailed design of proprietary equipment okay so normally what you the process engineer need to do is to specify the process duty of the equipment such as flow rate heat load temperature pressure yeah and then select an appropriate piece of equipment you need to select because normally pump there are several types so you need to identify which pump that suitable for your uh, fluid okay whether your fluid is newtonian or non-newtonian and then uh, the process engineer will also involve uh, 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 um, consulting eh? you need to consult with vendor uh, discuss with the vendors to ensure the equipment supply whether it's suitable or not so a lot of communication discussion eh, with the supplier all right while non-proprietary equipment uh, this is an example for example he hit a sender reactors distillation column vessels and flash drum so the task of process engineer is usually limited to selecting and sizing the non-proprietary equipment then what you then the, what the engineer will do next after they identify the other they select and after they calculate what is this the best sizing for the post the, the post production need then uh, then the information would then be transmitted in the form of sketch, a drawing, uh, or uh, provide the specification sheets of uh, the the of the result from the calculation to specialist mechanical design group or to the fabricators design team uh, for the detail uh, design. Okay. So for example, for distillation column like this. All right. For the draw the, the specification that you need to uh, calculate uh, then from the calculate you can identify uh, the number of plates you can identify the type and design of plates and then diameter of the column number of plate uh, plates uh, position of the inlet outlet and instrument nozzles okay so this is among the things the process engineer will calculate and identify okay the best size the best type that suit the uh, uh, your your plan needs all right common practice in industry in reality is especially for chemicals fuels and polymers and foods uh, and pharmaceuticals industry what they do uh, from the needs of their factory all right they will calculate based on the productivity needs then the operation engineer of this factory okay the design engineer all right will specify the design okay all right parameters okay then next they will consult the engineer will consult with engineering procurement constructions company all right for detailed design okay then what happened next this epc company will subcontract where to the specialist fabricators to design 
the equipment. So this is reality what, what actually happened. Alright. Okay. So this is in reality what happened. Okay. Uh, mainly the operating, uh, the sorry, no, the, the, normally the engineer at operating company, the factory, uh they will not they will not they will they will not do all the complete design so most of the job will be in subcontract okay uh to the uh engineering procurement construction company and specialist specialist equipment fabricators all right so to ensure that the data, uh, the transferring of the data, the exchange of the data between the factory, the operating factory, uh, the engineer in the fact, uh, operating factory to the uh, EPC company and the fabricators, all right, uh, it's, ve uh, it's very important basically. And then to ensure this, uh, under control and accurate transmission happen, it is very important to have industrial standard specifications. Okay, by having the standard specifications, we will it will facilitate information exchange. Okay, with vendors. All right. Okay, why we need this? Why we need the specifications? Okay, because this will lead to cheaper designs. Alright, because most of the piping sizing, okay, uh, is as in the standard. So, if let's say we are using the piping sizing, the diameter is uh, not following the standard, we need to custom make the piping. So, basically, we need to fabricate from the solid metal in order to get our uh, special special diameter of pipe so it will cost it will cost uh, greatly and eh? it will increase the cost greatly then another reason why we need to have a standard specification is because we want to reduce the risk of rework during construction okay if let's say the rework happen due to our careless mistake due to some of the technical error Ah, it will greatly uh, affect the costing of the plan design. Alright, so <laughs> that's it for now. Alright, class. Uh, for the standard, I will produce another video. Uh, or I will try to find other video on the standard. Alright. Uh, the standard specification for the equipment design. There are several uh, standard specification for plan design. And our next video will on how to get a sources of equipment design information. Okay, uh, we will try to browse uh, Google, uh, any internet, and I will check. I will show you a uh, several uh, website. Okay, where you can get a. Uh, uh, very good uh, information on equipment design and then you can refer to, to it. Okay class, see you for uh, another video. Thank you.